In this recording, we'll talk about how to use Lagrangian method for optimizing any objective function over set of certain constraints. Now, I'll give an example first, and then I'll give the general view of the of the problem. So, supposedly, in case if you have the function f of x y is equal to two x square plus y square minus 2xy plus 6 okay and the constraint is gxy which is equal to x plus y is equal to 1 so you can form Lagrange <coughs> where the method is going to find out the optimal values of x, y and lambda such that you try to optimize 2x square plus y square minus 2xy plus 6. This is your objective function subject to the constraint this. This is the constraint and this is the Lagrange multiplier and you write the multiplier as constant minus variables 1 minus x minus y why do you write like this and why not x plus y minus 1 we'll, we'll see it later and then how many variables are there there are two variables <coughs> x and y so you'll find out so you'll write that there are two variables x and y i is equal to 1 2 and there are how many constraints? There are there is one constraint, j is equal to 1. So how many partial derivatives you'll find out? You'll find out three partial derivatives, one for each variable and one for the constraint. So you'll find out del L by del X. You'll find out del L by del Y, that is one for each variable, and then you'll find out del L by del lambda so once what is del L by del x in this case it will be 4x minus 2y minus lambda is equal to 0 what is del L by del y in this case it will be 2y minus 2x minus lambda is equal to 0 and what is del L by del lambda in this case, which is 1 minus x minus y is equal to 0. Now, you can, you can simplify the first two equations and you can write 4x minus 2y is equal to lambda and 2y minus 2x is equal to lambda. So you can equate these two equations and what will you get is 4x minus 2y is equal to 2y minus 2x. So that would imply 6x is equal to 4y which would imply 3x is equal to 2y or y is equal to 3 by 2x. And then you can substitute the value of y into the third equation which you have got. So that would become 1 minus x minus 3 by 2x is equal to 0. So that would be 2 minus 2x minus 3x is equal to 0. This will be 2 is equal to 5x or x is equal to 2 by 5 okay you can put this value of x here which is y is equal to 3 by 2 into 2 by 5 x so which is 3 by 5 x so you've got the value for x as 2 by 5 you've got the value for y as 3 by 5 and what is the value for lambda lambda you can take up from the second equation which is 2y minus 2x minus lambda which is 
2y minus 2x minus lambda is equal to 0 it will fetch you 2 into 3 by 5 minus 2 into 2 by 5 is equal to lambda and on simplification you will get lambda which is equal to 2 by 5 so you've got the values of x y and lambda so these are the values of x y and lambda now let us try to put this in more general form what exactly you are trying to do so you are trying to do this if you look at it more carefully this was your objective function in this example the objective function is in two variables it could be an objective function of n variables also okay that is you could have max of you 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 could have x1 x2 and so on to xn so you might have the function which is of n variables okay here there were only two variables it could be that the function is of n variables here the constraint is only one there is only one constraint but in general there could be m constraints such that m constraints hold m constraints which is gj which could be a function of x1 through xm xn is equal to cj so, um, so there could be m equations here like this so g1 x g1 which could depend upon x1 through xn is equal to c1 g2 which depends on x1 through xn is equal to c2 and so on so there could be m equations here and here the way you have formed the lagrange you could have actually formed lagrange as in case of uh, in case in more generally you could have formed lagrange as l which is the function of x1 through xn okay plus summation of j starting from 1 to m lambda j cj minus gj x1 through xn okay so there was only one constraint there could be many constraints so actually what you are trying to do is that you are trying to say supposedly if you have like this that is g1 x1 through xn c1 g2 x1 through xn c2 and so on to gn x1 sorry gm x1 through xn cm so you will be forming m constraints here so you will be forming like this that is what you will be what you will be doing is basically like this which is uh, lambda 1 that is so the first constraint it will be c1 minus g1 into all that plus lambda 2 c2 minus g2 and all that and so on to lambda m which is cm minus gm and all that so that could be written in a shorthand notation like this that is summation of all this lambda j j starting from 1 to m 1 to m and that's what you have done okay so this is the way it is written in books that's the reason I'm writing this so what you will do is that now how many how many partial derivatives you will find out there are how many i's I'll just write in a different thing for you now there are how many i's i's are equal to 1 to n there are how many j's j's are equal to 1 to m 
So how many partial derivatives you'll find out? One for each variable, that which is n, and one for each constraint, so n plus m. So you'll find out n plus m first order conditions in this case. Okay, so n first order condition for i equals to 1 to n and m first order conditions for j equals to 1 to n. So let me just write it nicely for you, the first order condition. How do you write first order condition in this case? So the first order conditions would be actually, this is the constraint which you have. Okay, let me just this sorry okay this is the constraint which you have here okay so it is starting from one to one this was the constraint which you have now when you find out the first order condition what you do is that is one you find out the first partial derivative say it is fi x1 through xn, which will be the function of x1 through xn, minus lambda, uh, sorry, summation, j starting from 1 to m. Why minus? Because here, x1 through xn, this is coming through a minus sign here. Because of this, lambda j, del gj by del xi, x1 through xn equal to 0. Okay, that this is for all i's equal to 1 to n. And then for the deri uh, then for the constraints, what is the, you, you'll find out del L by del lambda j. See, this is del L by del xi's, all of this this is for all variables then you have del l by del lambda j this is for all constraints which will be just this that is your g j x1 through xn is equal to c j you remember the constraint which we put here this was the constraint okay so huh so I'll, let me just write it more properly for you so that you can understand that better. So del L by del lambda j in this case would be cj minus gj x1 through xn equal to 0, which you can write as gj x1 through xn equals to cj. Okay, so these will be n partial derivatives for each of i's, for each of these variables, and these will be m partial derivatives for each of the constraints. Okay, so this is, these are the first order conditions using the Lagrangian method. So what we did was that we have given, first of all, an example to you that how will you calculate the first order conditions using Lagrangian method and then we have generalized that problem. Okay. 